So I want to introduce Mr. Bram Cohen, founder of Chia, a cryptocurrency with a novel mining approach, the former founder of BitTorrent, and also the host of the new Coindesk podcast, Hard Problems with Bram Cohen. Cohen is joining the hash today, fresh off a $61 million raise, and he's intending to take the company public and enters the market at a time when energy used for mining is under scrutiny in regards to cryptocurrency. Bram, welcome to the show. Good to be here. So I want to just lead off with an initial question uh, and say, you know, we've talked about proof of space and time consensus algorithms previously on the show, but I'd like to hear from you, you know, uh, at a high level, what this means, particularly because when I got my haircut this past weekend, my barber's boyfriend was farming Chia on his work servers. So give us an (laughs) overview of what that looks like. And I think that's maybe the premier use case that I've heard of recently. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies generally have this process called uh, mining, where uh, as part of growing the blockchain, you uh, typically will have custom hardware uh, that you have to go buy for this process that's only useful for this that then burns uh, quite a bit of electricity uh, to make new blocks. Uh, And uh, this uh, burns a lot of electricity and is only accessible if you have this special hardware where uh, Chia's consensus algorithm works uh, mostly off of space just ordinary space like you have on your hard drive. And uh, your the rewards that you get from farming Chia uh, are in exact proportion to the amount of space that you put into it. And there's very little electricity that goes into this uh, farming process and no uh, specialized hardware necessary. Your barber's boyfriend's computer can do it just fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was maybe the top level takeaway there too. And part of that is right, like, that it's mining is again sort of more open to individuals rather than uh, you know mining rigs or things like that and that sort of idea. I'll take question number it, two. Uh, sorry, I, I was I, sorry for jumping in there, Bram. My bad. Um, I just wanted to ask you, sort of as a base layer founder, when you come into this thing, you know, do you have sort of two three things that you think this network will thrive at, or do you just sort of go in greenfield and see what people build on these networks? If you could tell me about some of the like the functionality that you see existing on Chia going forward. Uh, oh, yeah, no, we, we have lots of plans for functionality on top of it. Uh, at the moment, people are breathing down our neck for a uh, pooling protocol because the network's <laughs> grown quite a bit faster than we expected, uh, as a result of which uh, people aren't getting rewards very often. Uh, so we're c- creating a pooling protocol to smooth that out. So that's what I'm working on right this second. Uh, But um, in terms of what we're working on going forward, we have lots of things in terms of it being much better for doing uh, custody arrangements uh, and like DIDs and like NFTs and a whole lot of things like that. Um, I I think the the biggest thing that I want to really put a bunch of emphasis on immediately is uh, tokenization. Uh, Because when you you tokenize things in Chia, you automatically get this distributed exchange uh, between all of your colored coins that if someone who... uh, owns a part of uh, one colored coin and wants to trade it for some amount of some other colored coin rather than having to go be uh, sent to an exchange or emailed to someone or posted on Reddit or d- d- you can do anything with it. Um, and then if somebody out there uh, in the universe wants to take the other side uh, of this transaction, they want to accept this offer, they can make something that prints a balancing amount of coin A and burns a balancing amount of coin B, and they can then aggregate these together. And this will now be a valid transaction, which will go through on the blockchain without any intervention uh, from the person who made the offer in the first place. And in fact, it's possible to uh, market make on this. Someone who uh, it can take a bunch of these offers, like an exchange can be accepting these offers that people are posting, and then put them together um, and take uh, possibly some of the spread or have rules about how they don't take the spread, uh, and then make these valid transactions, which will uh, then go through. Uh, and this makes it so that uh, you don't have to trust the exchanges. And so that every 
uh, every tokenized asset, every colored coin automatically has over the counter trading with every other one as well. Interesting. I'll jump in here. Um, so you've previously said, Ram, uh, you believe cryptocurrency should be easier to use than cash, harder to lose, and nearly impossible to steal. Uh, and that anyone who wants to validate transactions should be able to farm without single-use hardware or big electricity bills. How well do you think the crypto space in general is delivering on that pros uh, promise so far? And is Chia the solution to all of that? Uh, well, there's really basic meat and potatoes stuff to do in cryptocurrencies, uh, which really get short shrift. Everyone gets excited about um, uh, uh, issuing new assets and uh, ha having price movements in them. Uh, but there's this really basic stuff that if you're like, uh, using a bank, the bank is providing security services for you, th that they're trying to make sure that if someone hacks into your accounts, they can't just immediately drain all the funds out of all of them. Um, uh, they do this in a way that you, have, as the consumer, have very little control over, and they do it with very little transparency, but they do do it. Uh, where uh, cryptocurrencies feel like you're carrying around like suitcases full of $100 bills sometimes. There's they just very little control over what's going on here. And, and it should, in principle, be possible for cryptocurrencies to be much better at these things, uh, to ha have better security controls, which are entirely uh, on, at the control of the end user and has complete transparency into what the policies are uh, around these things. So you can configure it however you want, uh, although that really hasn't uh, had very much emphasis. So a really basic thing that I'm very excited about is just a, a rate limited wallet. So when people are sending you funds, uh, they're sent directly into this rate limited wallet that you have that you can only spend money out of at a certain rate using the hotkey. But if it gets hacked, if someone steals your credentials, you can then go into like your safe deposit box or something and, and get your cold key, which is able to drain the thing completely so that whoever hacked you is only able to get the amount that they were able to drain in the time period before you went and did this recovery process. That's super cool. <laughs> yeah, really basic functionality. Uh, this kind of stuff has unfortunately gotten short shrift in cryptocurrency development generally. So I guess my question is, Chi has been, been coined kind of the green Bitcoin. And, you know, we've been talking yeah. a lot about climate concerns. We saw the North American miners get together with Sailor and Musk. We spoke about it earlier on the show today. I'd love to just hear your thoughts on on that committee that was put together and what you think that means for the crypto industry. Oh, uh, the, the it just inherently to how mining works is it's kind of horrible. Like it really is burning a lot of electricity. This is really not very green at all. Uh, and it's very clear from that clip that you played earlier that the, the miners in that meeting, they're thinking of this as a PR problem. They're not really taking this very seriously. It's like, like how, how do we get people to stop getting mad at us <laughs> about this? Um, uh, and, and uh, and the reason why them having a meeting is scary is not because, not just because, oh no, there was a meeting that I wasn't in on. People have gotten mad at me for me having meetings that they, they weren't in on either. I'm sorry, not the entire world is on, in on every meeting that I ever have. However, uh, it is the case that there's way fewer uh, Bitcoin miners than you'd really like. It's nowhere near as decentralized as uh, would be preferable. And a handful of them, a literal handful of them could get together and 51% attack the whole network, no problem. They don't because that would undermine the value of the whole thing, but it would be trivial for them to do. And, and that's very scary. So I guess I'll take this in a slightly different direction. Uh, so at Consensus yesterday, uh, Ray Dalio said that Bitcoin's greatest danger is its success, implying that as it becomes a real competitor to government-issued currency monopolies, they will necessarily have to respond. And to the, to the degree that it's successful is to the degree that it's endangered by that sort of thing. I know that you have some big ambitions for Chia. Are you thinking about what happens if you succeed to, you know, to a competitive level? Or kind of how are you thinking about these larger issues? Oh, I, I don't know. I just got blindsided by my coin price being a lot higher than I expected, and I'm scrambling <laughs> <laughs> to deal with it right now. So I, can't, I, I don't know how well I'm prepared for success here. Um, uh, but uh, cryptocurrencies right now, uh, they're really something that normal supply and demand applies to, right? Like the price of Bitcoin is determined by supply and demand. And people like talking about a lot of these more macroeconomic things that just really 
don't apply at all. Like you get weird and interesting things happening when you have a, a situation where if people were like getting paid in Bitcoin and then going and taking the Bitcoin and then spending at the market uh, and then the employees at the market were then themselves getting paid in Bitcoin, that, that creates all kinds of really interesting macroeconomic things that c- could happen there and stuff. We're not in that world. We're, we're nowhere close to that world. Uh, we're in a world today where um, almost no retail uh, transactions are done using cryptocurrencies. Uh, I, I aspire to uh, improve on this situation massively so that this is like a very uh, normal thing uh, for transac- for actual commerce uh, to be uh, at least done on a blockchain and possibly even in the denominated in the currency native to that chain. Um, uh, we're not in that world today, and it's really, really getting way ahead of yourselves to, to start thinking about that world or even insisting that the price of Bitcoin today has anything about what might happen in, if, if that comes to pass. And so, and so thinking about sort of the, maybe the criticism that you were just talking about around sort of the miners meeting up and some of this and sort of the inherent energy and efficiency there, you know, if Chia farming causes a hard drive shortage, we've, we've seen some supports or reports about in China, you know, is that an indication of your success or does that hurt the project's green ambitions? Because all these things have a supply chain, right? I mean, certainly Bitcoin regs included. Uh, so, so the plan has never been uh, for farming to be primarily around uh, it, around people buying hard drives and doing nothing w- with these hard drives but farming it. Uh, uh, what you, you really want to have happen is that uh, people take already wasted resources. They take over provision space that they have. They take decommission space that's being end of life that would otherwise be destroyed. And, and they farm off of that. Um, now, I can't go magically make the entire world start doing this immediately. Uh, all I can do is kind of make a marketplace where this makes sense, uh, which uh, w- which I did, and the market has been adjusting very, very quickly. Uh, like, mm-hmm. uh, literally, when we launched, there were about 100 petabytes on the network. There's currently over 10 exabytes on the network. That, that's over 100 times uh, the size that it was when it started. So uh, people were farming very profitably when the network uh, started up. There were s- several people who had a few petabytes out of that 100, uh, and they made uh, good money uh, off of farming that. Um, uh, however, it, it's you know a, a situation where any random yabo can invest some money and make several times their investment in the space of a month can't last for very long <laughs> because everyone's going to jump on that right like that that's the nature of the increasing entropy of the universe that we live in uh so that's happened uh which is why the net space is exploding so quickly which of course is resulting in the work difficulty exploding along with it so at some point uh wh- whether we've passed it now i i, I I'm not one to speculate about such things. At some point, it will become cost prohibitive to purchase new space uh, just for the sake of farming it. And we're going to see it almost entirely be based on this already wasted stuff, which is the thesis of the whole thing. Uh, We'll be able to tell uh, when that's happening um, just from the pigeonhole principle, that if you were to take every hard drive on every shelf in the inventory of every retailer in the world today uh, and buy all of it, that would be uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 exabytes. Now, Chia is already over 10 exabytes. <laughs> um, it's looking like, well, uh, past 20 in another week or two, maybe. W- where this is going to end, I have no idea. Huh. You can never tell where an S curve is going to end when it's in the upslope. It's like, I don't know, infinity. We, we have no idea where this is going. Uh, but once you get past 20 exabytes, then it's very clear that the space that's going towards it is mostly this stuff that was already out there, that, that, that's just already available for uh, whatever reason. And it's just making good use of otherwise wasted resources. All right, Bram, two questions. One quick one. How did you time peak FOMO? You're talking about 100x. <laughs> like People are like, this is the new thing, and I need to do it now. And I don't know nothing about it, but I'm doing it. How did you do it that? It was How a good market it? entrance. <laughs> I, I, like I, all, all I can do is light a match. I don't. I don't understand this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. No, no like, literally, I, I don't put a big. I, I don't like. I'm trying to build uh, build like a nice supportive community around Chia that that's help, helpful to 
developers and just kind of friendly. Uh, we don't have so many unicorns and rainbows. We, we don't have like so much memeing. Um, uh, and I'm not really trying to get massive PR. I'm trying to build stuff. Uh, and, and so the thing that that we've built uh, that I really could have launched it much sooner had I not been super concerned with making it really, really good. Uh, the thing that, that we've built has really clearly hit something viral and, and is working well and validating that thesis. But I'm really concerned about making things that are good and building real value and, and taking the long-term view that the value uh, of my uh, of my holdings uh, will go up if I'm creating real value in the long run. And, and that's what I'm working towards. I'm not dumping stuff today. Gotcha. So it's my second question and also kind of quick at this point. Uh, you've always talked about sort of an IPO being in the, in the works, right? You've always talked about... Uh -huh. uh, going public, right? It comes with public disclosure uh -huh. requirements. It comes with increased transparency. Mm -hmm. One of your colleagues told one of our reporters today that you're on an accelerated timeline to an IPO or to a, to a public <laughs> listing of some form. Can you give us a little more detail on how accelerated that is and how you're approaching that and why? Uh, it, it's, it's hard to say, you know, you know, we, we'd like to get it done as soon as possible. Uh, we're, we're still, uh, scrambling on our very basic immediate things of really improving the quality of our software, uh, getting stability, uh, in, in our network, uh, seeing what happens, it, like having a bit more uh, track record to coin price, uh, on, on everything. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah. And then. I mean, it's it's not just cryptocurrencies that have weird fashions, like like IPO markets <laughs> do their own thing <laughs> as well. Uh, but it would be really good for us to be public if for no other reason than if someone's uh, transacting in Chia, they might be sitting on quite a bit of Chia and be concerned about it going down. So it's actually very good for them if there's a public company so they can short it uh, to hedge some of that risk.